prove that the following limit is equal to 6. So I haven't done this problem yet, so it should make it a little more interesting. Before we do the proof, we have to figure it out. So this will be the scratch work. So in order to figure this out, we have to use the definition of convergence for sequences. So a sub n converges to L means for every positive epsilon greater than 0, we can find a positive integer n such that for all little n bigger than capital N, the distance between the terms of the sequence and the limit can be made arbitrarily small, so smaller than epsilon. So in this case, this is our a sub n, and this is L. And what we'll do is we'll look at the difference. So we have 4 over the square root of n plus 2 over n plus 6, and then we're going to subtract L, so minus 6. And we want this to be less than epsilon. So these cancel. So we have 4 over the square root of n plus 2 over n. And via the triangle inequality, at some point, we'll make this less than or equal to the absolute value of 4 over the square root of n plus the absolute value of 2 over n. Everything here is nice and positive, so we can drop the absolute values. So this is equal to 4 over the square root of n plus 2 over n. Now this next inequality is a little bit tricky. We want to be able to write everything with the same denominator. So what we'll do is we'll change this n to a square root. So this piece is going to stay the same. So this is 4 over the square root of n and this is plus 2 over the square root of n. And the reason is, by taking the square root of n, we make the denominator smaller. Therefore, this fraction is bigger than this fraction. Okay, now this is equal to 6 over the square root of n, uh, because we can add 4 plus 2 is 6. We want this to be less than epsilon. Let's solve this for n. So 6 is less than epsilon times the square root of n. Dividing by epsilon, we end up with the square root of n greater than 6 over epsilon. Squaring both sides, at last, we have little n bigger than 6 over epsilon squared. So this inequality is going to be true. Our proof is going to be legit if little n is bigger than this. So what we're going to do is we need to find a positive integer, capital N, to work with in our proof. So here's how we'll do it. We're going to use something called the ceiling function. So what's the ceiling function? If you take the ceiling of say 2.2, you get 3. If you take the ceiling of 0.2, you get 1. So it just rounds up. It just rounds up whatever you put in there. It's beautiful. So we're going to take capital N to be equal to the ceiling function of 6 over epsilon squared and then we have to add 1. And there's a reason we have to add 1. Why? Because now this is greater than, right, we drop the 1, 6 over epsilon squared. And we can do that because this side over here is greater than this because we dropped the 1. This rounds up this funky number, 6 over epsilon quantity squared. So this is certainly greater than or equal to 6 over epsilon quantity squared. So n is a positive integer and it's greater than 6 over epsilon squared. So we just showed it existed kind of, right? We found it. All right, let's go and do our proof. So that was harder than the proof. That's We just figured it out. Now we just have to formalize it. So proof. We start the proof by letting epsilon be greater than 0. And then we have to somehow find n. What well, we just spent forever doing that. So choose capital N equal to the ceiling function of 6 over epsilon squared plus 1. And that's certainly an integer. Beautiful stuff.
right? And how did we come up with that? Well, if I hadn't done any of this that I did before, this would seem like magic. <laughs> it wouldn't make any sense at all. So then, for all little n, bigger than capital N, we have to look at our sequence. And I already forgot what it was because I, I didn't write it down. I just kind of wrote it down here in the video. Here it is, up here. So 4 over the square root of n plus 2 over n plus 6. That's our a sub n. And then we want to show when you subtract L, that this is going to be less than epsilon. So we have to show it. So let's carefully do that. The 6 is cancel. So this is equal to 4 over the square root of n plus 2 over n. And now we can invoke the power of the triangle inequality. This is less than or equal to 4 over the square root of n plus the absolute value of 2 over n. Everything here is positive, as we said before. So this is equal to 4 over the square root of n plus 2 over n. And as before, we'll, we'll play the same game. We want this to have the same denominator. So we'll keep, we'll keep the square root. And we'll keep the square root. And this 2 over n here, we want whatever we write down here has to be bigger. So what we'll do is we'll take the square root of that n. And why does that work? Again, um, when you take the square root of n, this piece here becomes smaller, right? Because the square root of n is smaller than n. And that means that this whole fraction here becomes bigger. So it's bigger than this one here. That's why this works. And then here we can add them up. And so we get 6 over the square root of n. And we know something about little n. Little n is bigger than capital N, which is equal to the ceiling function of 6 over epsilon squared plus 1. And we know that's greater than the ceiling function of 6 over epsilon squared. And again, the ceiling function just rounds everything up. So this is greater than or equal to 6 over epsilon squared. So little n is in fact greater than or equal to, or rather greater than, right, we'll take the strong one, 6 over epsilon squared, right? And so what does that mean? That means that 1 over little n is less than 1 over 6 over epsilon squared. And then so 1 over the square root of n, taking the square root of both sides, this is less than 1 over 6 over epsilon. So this is less than 6, I write it like this, whoops, let me do it down here, less than 6 times, and then 1 over the square root of n is less than this. So it's 1 over 6 over epsilon. All these 6's and epsilon's are a mess. This is equal to 6 times, and then you flip it because you're dividing. Epsilon. Okay, there it is. Lots of mindless detail. I just wanted to do it again just to make the point that it was important to add the 1, right? It does give you this, this strict inequality. So that's how we got it, right? We got it from right here. There's no other strict inequalities, no other strong inequalities anywhere in the proof. So hopefully that made sense.